Okay, so we've seen how different monitor profiles relate to different image profiles. We saw how image profiles relate to each other. Now we need to take into account the output in terms of print. What our ideal working space will be will be determined by two other factors. What is the output, the final output, the print? What is the reproducible range of colors on a printer? and how many colors do we actually have in an image. Now the ones that we have in an image, that's something I will show you later because I have to show you some other things before that. But as far as the printing profile, that's something I can show you right here. Let's start with our familiar one, sRGB, right? And uh, just to remember, if you put it on a spectrum locus, if you remember it looks like this. Well, let's open up our famous US web coded swap 2 which is if you chose settings for America North pre uh, prepress in your in your uh, Photoshop settings which most people do they get this profile as default and as you can see immediately you see two of the interesting things first of all what you see is that our printer profile it's much it's more complex in shape than the, just the, um, the triangle that we see with our RGB profile. And this is usually the case. In fact, most CMYK profiles are usually bigger in size because they contain more complex data. Now, let me show you something really interesting. Uh, I'll just put this in 3D. You can see it has a pretty peculiar shape. Uh, it's a pretty interesting one, but basically that's what it looks like. Now let's compare this to sRGB and let's put sRGB into single color so we can better see it. And we can see now that if we were to use sRGB in our images we have the capacity to put pretty much all the colors that are reproducible on that prepress except some of the blues and some of the greens ones here. Actually it's not really blues, it's more of a cyan color. But what you're seeing is that unless your image contains these unproducible colors, you can get away with sRGB. Let's say you have a lot of skin tones. You should be able to get away with it without too much trouble. In fact, uh, if you remember color match, that was the other more pre-press friendly. Uh, let's put this in wireframe and single color. Let's put this in red as well. And what you'll see is that it, it fits a little bit better than the sRGB, right? It contains a little bit more headroom, so we can produce even some of those more greens and more blues, or cyans. But it's still not enough. But let's say that we want to use this with Adobe RGB, right? Well, Adobe RGB is big enough to fit everything. There's not one color that's outside of it in this particular prepress environment. Now let's put this in 2D. So the blue one is Adobe RGB and this one is US web swap coded um, US web coded swap 2. Okay, let's deactivate that and let's check out maybe a Japan version with compared to this one. So you can see that this was this one that I'm showing before and after. That's US web coded and Japan has a much bigger one. So in those cases, let's put this in 3D. All of a sudden, not every color is in there, right? We actually have some colors that go beyond. Not too much. A little bit of cyan's there. But you can see not all pre-press environment is the same. Let's go to 2D. Uh, let's deactivate Japan. Actually, let's compare Japan to a Greco version, which is an American version you might use for more glossy paper. Same problem. A everything fits except a little bit of colors here in the cyan's. Unless you have a image that has very particular cyan colors that fall into this area, and that that's important to the image you shouldn't have any real problems. So let's compare this now, not with Adobe, but with 
ECI and let's put it to wireframe single color and let's put it blue as well you can see that well wait a minute we had some colors outside of gamut with Adobe RGB but ECI actually covers everything now so ECI is as you can see a little bit larger and it's more friendly for the prepress environment so if you have that option if you have that environment where that is something that people who print expect or can be educated and it's not a bad idea so ECI okay let's compare this now let's take this to 2D once again so this is the uh, coded version and we have also Fogra version which is the, um, the European uh, prepress so let's compare that to the ECI and as you can see ECI covers everything that the Fogra 39 profile of the printer can so if you're working with that profile in that prepress environment ECI profile the blue one here is a very good choice now let's compare this to Adobe RGB and again everything fits except one area cyan's as long as you don't have cyan's in your image you will be fine if you do those will be unprintable so ECI seems to be the better more safer choice not just because it has a bit of a larger gamut but also because of other issues we talked about right it has an L star tone response curve it has probably a little bit better shadows less posterization in some areas so for critical work and if you have that option may not be a bad idea okay let's compare now this in 2D again so we have an easier match okay so what we're looking at is a Fogra 39 right well let's compare this now to a inkjet printer such as Epson 3880 well what we can see is that inkjet printers typically even the more standard version is bigger than the prepress environment which is to be expected actually they have better technology and they're not designed to print you know hundred thousand magazines but instead um, just a few images so let's compare this to sRGB well if you were to use sRGB and you were to print at home on this printer you would have an issue let's put this in 3d right sRGB would clip the colors well inside of these skin tones area here if you have a lighter skin tones such as this one and uh, if you're doing some type of uh, in, uh, landscape work the blues and the greens will all get clipped well let's compare this now to Adobe RGB very popular choice for retouchers and photographers and uh, well we are standing much much better a little bit of yellows up here slightly in the blues which typically is not that big of a deal and pretty much you're safe right and uh, if you were to by any chance working with the ECI version then you would fit again everything inside so again ECI is a better choice for this if that's what you really want um, let's compare this like we said with Adobe RGB now let's deactivate or better yet let's show this in 2D and let's take another situation and that's when printing on a Epson stylus wide gamut printer like a 9900 now this is uh, what we refer to I guess is um, a wide gamut printer right so check it out wow it's much bigger right it's actually quite a lot quite a lot bigger so if you're a, uh, a landscape photographer fine art photographer and you have shoot a lot of landscapes that will be this area here with blue cyan's and greens and you're working with Adobe RGB you would not be able to print some of those colors you would clip them right in the working process and in fact if we were to show this in 3D you would see yeah definitely some oranges and reds so if you're doing something like a, I don't know volcano shots or something you got an issue or some fashion critical fashion if you're working with I'm guessing that will be something that's quite 
visible either in some fashion um, you know designer clothes which has a lot of those really saturated greens and blues or if you're working with a shot maybe of some really interesting colors you know like a blue wall which is painted in some really bright blue color or something like that and you want to keep that color in your image when printed or if you're working with landscapes you would have issues with working in Adobe RGB and trying to print this on this particular Epson wide gamut printer. In fact here is a really interesting idea. Uh, let's go back deactivate the Adobe RGB and let's show this in let's say my monitor which we will put in wireframe and single color and now you'll see something really interesting. So this blue wireframe represents what my monitor is able to produce in terms of color and this big pile of color inside that's the Epson 9900 which can produce more colors than my monitor can see. So what you will end up happening is something that's not that common when printing. You will in fact be able to see more saturated colors in your print than you would in your screen but not only that it only works if the image has those saturated colors and if you didn't clip them already by working in say Adobe RGB or something smaller than that and if we were to compare this to even smaller like a standard gamut monitor you will see just how little of the colors I mean just how much of the color is able to print in this printer that your printer your monitor can see right so you will be working blind and definitely not good idea if you're working with that kind of situation so a wide gamut monitor would be a better choice that's number one and also Adobe RGB as a color space when working would also clip the colors so that's not a good choice either so what would you choose well in that case I would go with Profoto right now let's See, Profoto is actually so big, the biggest one, that everything fits inside. So you wouldn't be clipping those colors until you have to print them and make the final print. And then, you know, if your image has more colors than the printer can reproduce, then you would lose those colors in a way. But for the most part, if you're working with this large warehouse storage type Profoto, right? you would be able to manipulate the color without too much problem for printing in this environment. But it doesn't make all that much sense to me if let me deactivate Epson and let's use a web coded swap 2 and let's say this is your output. Well, all of a sudden you have all this huge space right but very small output so all this empty space in between is somewhere where you can have colors that ultimately you can't reproduce so if you manipulate without color you're gonna have a pretty interesting surprise when it gets to print because you won't be able to see those colors not that saturated so what we would try to do here is probably for that environment and not choose Profoto for prepress but let's say ECI or Adobe RGB depending on what's your preference and for some other reasons but Adobe RGB would comfortably fit everything in, inside right and when we're working with that you wouldn't be clipping any colors while working and the difference wouldn't be so huge that you get a shock and if you're working with a, a wide gamut monitor then you would be even able to see what you're doing so as you can see we have a quite an interesting uh, relationship between the working spaces and the output and as I said the output will always be relative to your input so what it is that you're starting with and you know when some people say you should always use Profoto I disagree it's not and it's not good choice for every situation and especially for some situation it's even counterproductive as we'll see when we get to compare these images inside by the way I'm not going to show you this right now I'm going to show it to you later but what you can do is you can import an image inside of this program and it will show you where the colors actual colors within the image fall in comparison to these profiles 
and that's a very useful way to see exactly what is going to happen and we'll see that later